Good evening, and welcome to the Camera Artist Guild Thursday Critique. I am your host, George Deloge. I'm a portrait artist and photographer's coach coming to you from Los Angeles, California. Now, if you're watching this on uh, the Facebook Live broadcast, go ahead and comment uh, and leave your comments. I look at every comment and I will return any questions that you have uh, in the comments section. Uh, if you want your image to be critiqued, I pick five images every week. If you want those images to be critiqued, uh, if, place uh, a message on the Facebook group page, the Camera Artist Guild Facebook group page. Attach your photograph to it, and then I will pick five images out. If you're joining us on YouTube, go ahead and hit that like button down there and uh, or, or share. And, well, do whatever the youtube stuff is that you got to do in order to get it out. I'd also like to welcome all of the new members to our organization. Uh, our organization is growing, and uh, we have uh, well over 2,000 members right now. We added 15 new members from around the world and uh, definitely like to, in, uh, to welcome all of you to the organization. We have uh, members from uh, Nigeria from uh, Ghana, from India, and from America, all join this week. And one of the things you do when you join Camera Artist Guild, oh, if you want to know how to join Camera Artist Guild, just simply look up Camera Artist Guild group on Facebook Live and request to join the group. Uh, answer a couple questions. I'll let you into the group uh, as long as you're not a spammer. <laughs> and... Uh, then come join us and be part of it and learn uh, learn more about photography and, and uh, find a place where you can be at home with other people who speak photography. Photography is a universal language. Uh, you may be from anywhere in the world, but we all speak photography. And so this is a place where photography is spoken. So anyway, getting back to the new members. We got new members in, and one of the questions that they ask... Uh, pretty regularly, uh, is George, how do we get in more clients? That's one thing that they're concerned about. Now, I suggest to you that that's not the question to really be asking. Now, if all you want is more clients, then all you have to do is advertise uh, that you do weddings in the local newspaper uh, for uh, you do weddings for $100 and you will be booked solid. I guarantee it. Every Saturday, you will have a wedding. And at the end of the year, if you don't spend anything on anything, you'll have $5,200, which is barely enough to cover equipment. So I suggest to you that wanting more clients is not what you really want. What you really want is to add more revenue. You want to build a business that returns to you a good lifestyle. And that's the challenge. So... One of the first things that you have to do is evaluate your market. Now, we've talked about this a lot, and I'm not going to go into great depth tonight because we have images to review, but pay close attention to uh, the Camera Artist Guild group. I'll be writing uh, some information uh, to you guys more on, on business. But the first thing that you have to do is look at your photography as a product. Now, if all you are doing is in the trying to make a little money in order to offset your photographic equipment, then maybe a hundred dollars isn't bad for a wedding and you get to play photography for a weekend and cover your camera equipment. But if you want to make a living, you have to approach photography as a business. And so photography ends up being your product. You have heard me say this time and time again. I said it last week. I'll say it again this week. I am not a photographer looking for business. I am a business and my product is photography. So the first question you have to ask is what type of a product can you sell that will reach a market that can afford your product and supply you with enough revenue in order to support the lifestyle that you want? And that's where your research comes in. Now, I'm not going to go into great depth here right now, but... Think about it. That is where you have to go because what you want is more money and not more work. 
there's only a little bit of time in, in or only a, a finite, I would have to say, only a finite amount of time in anybody's life. And so you have to maximize that time and maximize the amount of revenue that that time will generate. So you need a product that will sell at a price and a volume that will support your business. And again, that's where research comes in. So anyway, that's just a little taste of where we're headed with Camera Artists Guild. And uh, so keep the questions coming in and stay tuned for more information. Now I'm going to swing around here and get into the image critique as we go on. And okay, here we go. We've got the first image, and the first image is by Anthony Roberson. Robertson. Robert Robertson. Oh, boy, I should know your name by now, Anthony. Thank you. Sorry, brother. I didn't mean to mess you up like that. I got my mic cable all cornered up here and I can't get around it. There we go. Okay. This is an excellent image. I really like it. Uh, let me uh, click off my palettes. There. Whoops. Here we go. Click off my palettes there for a little bit and give you a good look. Uh, you have a really distinctive style. I, I've watched it evolve and uh, I really like what you're doing. Uh, you've got the, the main point of interest here, the kiss on the one-third compositional line. Uh, I might adjust that hand a little bit so it's not so flat turned to the camera because we don't want uh, the back of the hand turned directly at the camera if you can keep from it. Uh, but uh, that's a minor point. Now, the only... well, uh, This is obviously a combination of artificial light and available light, and you've done a very good job of that. Uh, you're using uh, a soft box of some sort uh, off uh, camera, camera right, and it's illuminating the people. The one thing that I would try to do, if you can get away with it, is bring in a second light source. And this second light source is going to have to be very, very light. You are not going to put a lot of, em a lot of energy behind it at all because you only want to raise these shadow values right here in the center. You don't want to obliterate them. You don't want to make the faces the same as here. You want to keep a very nice uh, uh, ratio between shadows and highlights, but you just want to open this area up here just a little bit. So this is where a snoot comes in. If you can run a snoot on a, on, on a small light source, Bring that just off camera over here, camera left. Point that snoot right in this general area. Drop it down to where it's only maybe a third of a stop above whatever you're getting right here. If, if that much, even less than that, if you can uh, lower it. Most uh, strobes run on tenths of stops. So you could even drop it down to two tenths of a stop rather than three tenths. But somewhere in there, just a little bit just to open up this area right in here so you can see the kiss. And that would just take it right on up to the next level. But it is outstanding and very saleable. Your style is, 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 is quite noticeable. And uh, I will put camera artists, guild photographers up against other photographers any day in the world. This We have an organization of excellent photographers and you're always growing, and I, I just so I'm so thrilled to be part of uh, of that growth. Okay, let's go next image. Al Cabrera, very good, Al. Al, you always do some great stuff. Your composition is strong, um, and your light source is very good. I know uh, it was mentioned that uh, you may want to add. A kicker light to the left hand side so that there would be a little more separation between uh, the back side of the black dress and uh, the back side of the, the subject and uh, kind of tone down the pink tree a little bit. Uh, it would not tone it down, but it would balance out the light a little bit. Uh, that's a very distinct possibility. Uh, it, it's um, again, we're talking about adding light very, very lightly. It was uh, Don Blair, an old guy who's been 
had long since passed away. Uh, he was old when I came into photography. But he used to refer to accent lights, kickers and hair lights and other accent lights other than the key light as being like spices, like garlic. And that uh, if you add too much garlic to the spaghetti sauce, it's overpowering. If you add just enough to the spaghetti sauce, it can set it all the way off. So you want to use all of your accent lights very, very sparingly. And again, this one would work well with a snoot uh, or, a, or, a, or a very, you could probably get away with a uh, really tight grid on a sub inch reflector, uh, just a little bit off of uh, camera, out there, camera left. Uh, and that would just give you a rim alongside of the dress, just a little bit alongside there, right up her back area and the back of her head. But excellent work, Al. You know, congratulations, man. You you just, both of you guys, fabulous. Matter of fact, everybody is really fabulous. It's hard for me to find things that I can actually bring to uh, kind of help you. But I think that will help a little bit. Let me see here. Let me spread this image out. I think, uh, nope. Okay. And <laughs> I did have it spread out as much as possible. All right. Next image uh willie demetrius richardson boy you killed it this time willie and uh you've come out of your uh your traditional water shots which you've been doing an awful lot of uh location stuff uh, lifestyle ish ish lifestyle type editorial work and that's all been excellent but this is this is really good uh i like your creativity I like your thought. You dropped her in again on the one third compositional line. You may refine her leg pose just a little, bring the, bring the toe a little closer to the other leg over here. Uh, that might uh, help it just a little bit and extend her finger or index finger just a little bit uh, so that it has a little balance to it. Uh, I am I am picking at nits, man. I am nitpicking. This is this is really excellent. You have uh, you got perfect Rembrandt lighting. Your color tones are right where they should be. Skin tones, that is, are right where they should be. Your exposure is right where it should be. Uh, you're using uh, white, but you've dropped it low enough that uh, there's plenty of separation between the light ribbon and uh, the white background and the white cube. So again, all in all, stellar. Another great image. Okay, let's knock that one out. Tony Shaw, all right. You got this guy right, right on the one third compositional line. Uh, so he is strong there. You got good leading lines uh, in there. Uh, I think I'd tone down this pillar a little bit, uh, you know, with the, with light coming in on it. And, you know, I wonder, uh, just wondering uh, if you went to a grid and caused this area over here and this area over here, camera left and camera right, you just knocked the light off of it and focus the light more on just the subject and then you can keep the, the blue gel that you got uh, back here. I think that that would add more impact to it. Uh, still, it's a nice, a nice photograph. The guy's well posed, uh, well composed. But uh, as um, was pointed out in Al's stuff, there's a lot of different things that draw your attention. And you want to focus your attention right on this guy here. So uh, you could burn some of this in. This That might help a little bit. Uh, I don't know well, whether it would or not. And I'm not going to go through uh, the burning in process. You can do that on your own. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work too swell. But just something to think about. You know what you're doing. Okay, Nicole Elon Momore, and it was really nice speaking with you. Uh, Nicole and I had a conversation over the phone, 
uh, about an image. And uh, matter of fact, if you if you get stuck or you got stuff you want to know, there's things that are on your mind, message me. Uh, you can message me. You can DM me through uh, Facebook anytime. Uh, I'll even jump on the phone with you uh, and we can talk about stuff. I want to help you guys in order that you might improve the quality of your work and that we can grow together as a, as a club and uh, as, a, as a group. Okay. Uh, smoke, uh, crown, interesting. Raise the light source just a little bit if you can. Uh, that way you've got it coming in at a little bit more of a 45 degree angle rather than um, where it is. Now, you may have a little trouble getting it in there uh, because you might have a ceiling problem and the amount of light that you're using. But um, that's why I use uh, Paul Buff PLM umbrellas with the diffusion material across instead of soft boxes because I can get them higher, I can get that light source higher uh, in rooms that have lower ceiling. But that would be one thing that would help. Now, it's really funny. Uh, and your smoke there is, is, uh, is good. You've done it right. Uh, I have a funny story that happened to me when I was doing smoke uh, the last time I did it at the studio. My studio is in a building of law, a creative lofts. And there are about 30 of them, uh, on three different floors, uh, of lofts of different creatives. Some of them are graphic designers, some are hair and skin care. Some are photographers, there's music producers. There's a lot of different creatives in this space. And I am on the lower level and I decided that I was going to do a, a smoke shot. We had a guy come in and do it. So, uh, we did the shot, we did it a couple times. And then after that couple times, the room gets so full of smoke that you can't see the, the person, the person gets diffused, the cloud diffuses. Finally, the room gets full of smoke. So I decided I was going to open the door and let the smoke out of my studio. And it's just glycerin smoke. It, it doesn't hurt anything. Well, I opened the door and let the smoke out, but, uh, and I was working in there on a Sunday evening people thought that there was a fire somewhere in the building and they were having a fit and they almost sent the fire department. And then they found out it was just that crazy photographer down in the, down in the, the bottom level setting off smoke bombs. <laughs> uh, anyway, there you go. All right. Uh, last image is John Bauer, John E. Bauer. Great stuff. I love this. Uh, the The whole look is is super. Uh, I I wonder. I just wonder. Now this is again. I'm gonna be picking at nits. I love the color. You picked up the color of the flowers along with the color of the outfit. You've got the orange uh, up here matching closely the yellow and the flower. There's really really good stuff working there together. The only thing is, I wonder if you could have gotten a parasol that was matching. Now, either it wouldn't have to be pink. You could have one yellow and you could have one pink, but with the same size and the same uh, star pattern, if that's at all possible, because see, you've got symmetry there and uh, you've got one girl that's just a hair shorter than the other. So, uh, they make apple box, what they call apple box is the thing to stand on. And they make them in different thicknesses. There's pancakes, which are only about an inch or so tall. And then there's two, there's quarter and half and full apple. And each one of them has a different height. And you can put a pancake or a half apple, a quarter apple underneath the, the model on the left, on the right, camera right. And that would raise her head just another, just just up to where she's even with it. So if you can get matching parasols, raise her head just a little bit, drop the, the, uh, the, the composition down so that you don't have as, enough as much open sky. Uh, the open sky uh, really doesn't add anything to the photograph. So it'd be better if you were to crop it off. Let me see here if, uh, yeah, there we go. 
Uh, I just got a four by five crop in it and I just threw that four by five crop. Um, yeah, that I would still keep the same width if I could. I wouldn't narrow it down like I am right now, but something along in that line would uh, just really, really make it pop. And see so you, because you've got all of this upper area here that's really doing nothing. It has no information in it. It's just there. Now, if you were shooting this for a magazine cover and they're going to put the masthead up here or load in bullet points or something like that, then you're exactly right, right where it should be. Uh, those are a couple of things I hope they help. And, uh, oops, we get rid of the crop there. And that pretty much does it for this week. Let me swing back around here. And there we go. Okay, good enough. There are a couple of <laughs> outside. Oh, was outside with a smoke bomb. Didn't want a chance burning my house down. Yeah, I I understand what you mean. Uh, I really do. <laughs> and uh, they make a smoke machine. I have have one that runs on glycerin. Uh, it's uh, water and glycerin material. And it makes a, a fog. It's a fog machine, not a smoke machine, but a fog machine. And it makes a fog, but it doesn't put any heat. It doesn't have any heat or anything combustible in it. So that makes it a little bit better. So uh, something you can usually pick them up on uh, eBay or secondhand for not too much. And you can get the fog juice uh, at most of your uh, either film or uh, photography store, uh, stores. Okay, everybody, that pretty much covers it for this week. Uh, just uh, bouncing some ideas off you as far as business is concerned. Keep those ideas going and there's questions coming in. Uh, if you got any specific questions that you want answered, I'm going to try to, I'll try to address that. Uh, be sure that you let everybody uh, know about the broadcast, continue to put out the group and invite people so that we can continue to grow. Uh, if uh, you are watching this on YouTube, uh, what do they say? Smash the button, <laughs> press the like button a little bit, leave a comment that helps with the algorithm. And I am just beginning to build a YouTube channel. So uh, help me out, I appreciate it. And that pretty much covers it for this week. So I appreciate you guys. And just keep hanging in there. Keep making great images. Uh, and we are going to end the broadcast if I can find the way out. And I think that's the way out. See